Welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. I'm Queen Deborah. I'm Queen Emily. And we are Queens of Our Castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. It is January 27th, 2021, and this is episode 60. Yay! Finally so. made it to 60. It's Yay. taken four years, or how long? I don't know. <laughs> four and a half, something like that. <laughs> so, it doesn't really matter who's counting, besides me. <laughs> and then you guys. You know. I know, everybody's like, you should be at like 700 if we record it regularly, but we don't, so that's okay. <laughs> um, let's see, we are a podcast about knitting, crochet, just all the fiber arts. Sewing. But primarily yeah. knitting. Yep. And... Um, we are going to have finished objects, then we will have, well, first we'll have life update, then mm -hmm. finished objects, then works in progress. Then we will have a um, kindness is like sugar segment, and we will finish with um, any shop news. Sounds great. Okay, so let's hear what's been happening in your life, Emily, since we last recorded in December. In December, we had the most fantastic Christmas. I have to say, it was just so good. And it wasn't, just like most people I've talked to, wasn't flashy or big. I mean, it was very quiet and at home, and it was absolutely lovely. I feel like when I think about the month of December, even though there were a lot of busy things, it kind of has this golden light around it of like joy and contentment and happiness. It was just so nice. Um, and then this new year has been so busy. My father-in-law, as um, I think that I've mentioned before, he passed away back in July and um, we are in the process of selling his house. And so we've been, we took January and we've cleaned out his house and um, had to go through all of his belongings and everything. And that is such a big project. As anybody on here knows that has ever done that, it is so much work. I just can't even well, it seems describe like it's not it. Just um, the physical work, but emotional because you yeah. have to make a decision so about every single thing, and a lot of it will be emotional, like sentimental. Right. Yes. Or, yeah. Well, and it's. I, I was trying to describe it. I think it was to you um, a while back, but like we all know that moving is so stressful. It's like one of the top, don't they say like marriage, birth, and moving or like mm. marriage, birth, death, and moving are the four biggest stresses in your life, right? And so it's like moving, only every single thing you touch has to have a final destination. Like you, you're not just moving it all to your new place. It's got to get separated and sorted out. And it was, it's a lot. So, but it, it we have finished, actually, my husband is there right now, just finishing the last couple things in the garage and then it's done and um so that is really good and it, it was a really good I mean it's it's good we had some really sweet and fun memories come up and just some good things but we're almost done with that process and uh we have some carpet going in in the next couple of days finally That's in exciting. our family room and so you know just family and it's going to irritate me I wanted the window to be centered, but I'd rather that we were centered. There you go. It's um, just good, you know, doing homeschool and working on all kinds of things. So other than that, it's kind of our typical going along with life. Those, that's been enough. That's been enough to get on that's, with. That is enough. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, Christmas was fantastic. I did a daily vlog December 1st through December 24th and I shocked even myself that I managed it <laughs> and um yeah that was lovely I I really enjoyed the holidays a lot a lot and it was my anniversary um two weeks ago I've been married for 20 how old is Aria 22 she was born the day after I got married, so that's how I Yes, know how she was. <laughs> I can never remember how long until I'm like, how old is Aria? Okay. <laughs> I've been married for 22 years, and it's been great. And then I had a birthday celebration this last weekend. I'm going to say birthdays are one that are usually very 
low key and unless I plan something, um, nothing happens except for Emily usually takes me out to lunch, but we stopped <laughs> doing that a couple years ago because it was too hard to go out to lunch. <laughs> too hard to so, find anything you can eat. Yeah. yeah. So Emily was the only one that ever really did anything <laughs> to remember in my birthday, but we had um, a sweet group of friends that really, really spoiled me and I felt like a queen and it was really nice. So we did that it the weekend fun. before my birthday. I have beautiful uh, painted toenails. One of my friends mm -hmm. gave me a pedicure. Yeah. Like she strong armed me into it. She, <laughs> she really did. She had to pin me down to the <laughs> ground to make sure. I she was like, no, you are doing this. Now sit right here, right now. And she looked kind of scary. So you had to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, I had some friends that sent some lovely packages in the mail. So it was a really nice day. One of the gifts. Look at these earrings. I love those. These are the most fabulous earrings that have ever existed in the world. Yay! I am so glad you love They're them. cherries hanging from my ears. This chair is squeaky. I know. Squeakier than I'm I sorry. remember. That is a um, squeaky chair. That's why I don't use it anymore. I use this one. <laughs> that's cute. I, I know. That chair. It's just called cheap office chair from Amazon and, and a slip cover that you can also get on Amazon. It's covered in the cutest fabric. It's this little. Floral. Oh, sorry. I'm like yeah, right jammed up against it. my. No, you can't. Anyways, it's fun. very cute. So uh, then I've been dyeing yarn like crazy and sewing Shakespeare costumes for my daughter's Shakespeare play. This is the last year I'm doing Shakespeare plays. It's been a long time. <laughs> yep. And you go through all your kids doing it for a yeah. couple of years. Yep. So that's what's been going on. All righty. Um, Finished objects. Is there yes. Anything else? seems like there I always forget something I'm like oh I really wanted to share that but I can't remember now well I think that you should mention that your vlogs were on your other channel yes yes my Christmas vlogs mm -hmm. and some other videos um, are on my fairy tale chronicles on YouTube so and um, I believe you recorded I don't well I yeah, believe I'll share that I just watched end. it okay the then end. I won't say anything about that okay so awesome <laughs> okay so finished Let's, objects okay do you have have some I do I have right. I have a few <laughs> I have like two wish I have several I have a really fun one a really really fabulous finished object that I'm gonna show after you show one is it one of mine <laughs> <laughs> So well, you have one of my I finished do. objects. So. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna show mine. I'm gonna show my finished object. Okay. This is the finished object. <laughs> I'm claiming somebody else's work. <laughs> it's some of your work. Come on. Look at this amazing blanket. Okay. I'm holding it up. Where's the top? It goes this direction. Okay. Okay. Here, let me help you hold it up. So. Because people don't need to see me. A couple of years you. ago, I had this great idea to do a fusion blanket which means that there are fabric blocks interspersed with crochet. And I was going to do fabric blocks and then do a border of crochet and then, and then another one and another one like that, you know. And I got going on it and made a whole bunch of these blocks and started and did blanket stitching. And then when it came time to crochet, I gave up. And it sat in a box for a year. We talked about it on the podcast yes. in the first couple of years. Yeah. Time. And yeah. then I talked to one of my friends who really is good at crochet. And I said, would you be interested in this project? You can just have it because you'd be like, you should be so fast at the crochet part mm -hmm. and just whip it out. And she's like, yes, I would love it. She ended up giving it back to me as a birthday gift. This is my favorite fabric. You have to show that one. I love it so much. It's so pretty. So that was really, really kind of her. So sweet. To do that. I gave her a mess. Really <laughs> gave her a mess. And she made it into something beautiful. That was really nice. That's There's one end I need to weave in. Yeah. So here's my finished object. <laughs> Good job, Deborah. 
and Mandy. <laughs> yes, that's why I said I have a finished object and left because I didn't really, I didn't really finish it. So I actually quit. I gave up. I always tell my kids, it's fine as long as you don't give up, girls. Just keep going. Just don't give up. Well, I gave up. Okay. It's okay to give up on projects. That's okay. Like, yeah, because then you have good friends who finish them for you. <laughs> that but, was not the intention. <laughs> I thought she was going to make it for herself, but anyways, that was really, really sweet. It's beautiful. So I won't, I won't beautiful. claim credit for this one, Emily. Okay, well, I'll show this one. So this was a gift that I made for Deborah for her birthday, and it is the It's a Small World cowl, and I just realized I didn't look up the designer, so I will look that up in just a moment. But isn't that fun? Just a colorwork cowl knit in DK. Love it. It's just fun. And I know that It's a Small World is your favorite ride. Yep. And so when I saw this pattern, I bought it immediately. And I was going to actually make it for your birthday last year. But, you know, best of intentions. Yeah, I saw this pattern and I was like, oh, I love that. I'm never going to make it. <laughs> so that is so fun tell that you, you made the it. the designer. There's the it's clock. a Small World After All Cowl by Tannis Gray. Of course it's by Tannis Gray. Yeah, she has lots of fun things. She does such fun themey things too. So, yeah, that was really fun. And what in yarns <laughs> did I use? You know what? Mm. I actually don't remember. I didn't save the... You didn't dye these yarns? I did not dye these. I purchased these. It was one of those things where I went, oh, remember how I was going to make that cowl last year? I need to make it this year. And I, that means I need to cast it on in 10 minutes. So I ran to the to knit and pretty to the knitting store and picked up those yarns and cast it on and, and it went really fast actually i was worried that i wouldn't get it done in time but in fact i got it done in like three days because oh, it's wow. it's just so addictive you know when sometimes when you just get into color work mm -hmm. and you just want to do one more row one more row one more row well and it's this long it's exactly right color work it's and it's only two colors mm-hmm it's yeah. very, very cute. I have to say, if I was going to knit it again, I would definitely pick a yarn for the for the speckly one that did not have any of the darker color in it. This, I think, is a little bit too close. There's some deep purples in there that you can still see the design, but there are places, a couple places where it makes it a little muddy. That's um, the uh, The original was knit with a, a navy for the main color. Here, let's see if I can zoom in and turn my, I don't know if this will work. Can we see? Uh, ish, not. Anyway, it was knit with a very um, cute kind of mint and peach kind of variegated. Yeah, mint and pink and a little peach with no dark in it. So anyway, that was really fun though. I love it. So I'm glad you love it. Okay, I mentioned... So last year I did a whole bunch of washcloths and then I mentioned that I found this yarn that I wanted to try out. I think I bought it at Hobby Lobby at Christmas time. Yes. And I made um, a scrubby for my mom to go with some of her other wondrous dish cloths that I knit because I made her um, several yellow washcloths, but it's hard for you to, oh yeah. It has all this silver sparkle in it, so I thought it'd be cute to have a silver sparkly scrubby. And um, what I did is I knit the Wondrous Dish Cloth pattern without any of the pearls. It was just knit, and I only did maybe a little more than half of the length so that it was the um, size of a scrubber. And then I made one for myself and I have used this and washed it a few times. It looks brand uh, new. Yeah, it, it works up great. I don't think that it's really scrubby enough for me compared to the ones that are made out of like tool, like the, the netting kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but yeah, it works. I, I, I don't think I would buy this again to make more. I'll probably make more of these to use up what I have but I don't think I'll buy any more of it. I still like, I really like the single layer 
circles like this big made from the stiffer netting, not the really fine mesh tool. And I used to buy those at a local store called Kitchen Needs, but they've closed and I don't know who made them. And I tried making some of my own and I didn't like making them. <laughs> So now I don't have any, and I'm really upset about that. I think How there's some clothes? other scrubby yarns that are out there, too, that are different brands. I think I need to do some research mm -hmm. on that. Well, yeah, I've tried making some with the tool that, you know, like this, this wide mm -hmm. that you can buy. Um, but, yeah, I just prefer the ones that were a little bit stiffer because they lasted longer. They scrubbed better, so mm -hmm. I could use them for a lot longer. And I don't like... I don't know. Don't like the waste. I, of going I don't through like them. waste. Yeah. Waste drives me crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I agree. So, at some point, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and just make my own again. I've made like two, but that was it now that that store is closed. Well, there you go. Okay. Awesome. So. All right. I just have this stack. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay. So, I have shown this when I first started this, but I just finally got it out and finished this it's adorable little, little teensy baby sweater. It's almost like a doll sweater. I know. Well, it's it is a little so cropped, so it looks okay. even smaller than what it is. But this is a design by Lisa. She's Dole Valley Girl Knits. And it is called Linnea in Monet's Garden. And this was a collaboration with Lisa and I where I dyed the yarn Linnea in Monet's Garden based on the story, the little children's picture book. And then she designed the sweater. And I was a test knitter for her, but I was a horrible test knitter. And I did not finish it at the time, but I went back and finished it. And it has this beautiful lace. Oh, I'm sorry. It's got these really lacy, beautiful increases. And then this beautiful lace here at the hem. I did not do the lace on the sleeve. It The pattern calls for the lace on the sleeve here as well. Um, but it's so sweet. And it also comes with a little beret. Too. Oh, yes. Just it's just see. charming and darling, isn't it? It's so fun. This is so cute. But the lace, or it also comes, the pattern comes with a little matching beret. And I wanted to hurry and tell you the sizes because it's got some nice sizes. Um, it goes from a size six months, which is the one I knit, up to a size 12 years. So it's available for a wide range for this little girls. This seems more like a three month size, even though it's cropped. It, you'd think, you would think that, but it really isn't. It's It's got more space in it than you think. Babies are tinier than we remember, Deborah. <laughs> They didn't feel that way when you were born. <laughs> but they really are. But look so, how tiny that sleeve I know. is. It's like two fingers right there. But like it's it, so... it stretches. It's got enough stretch for their little hands it's just and everything. So, cute. so it's sweet. And this was um in my um memoir DK base, which unfortunately I am not carrying right now, just FYI, because it's really hard to keep it in stock. Um, just there have been some supply issues with my supplier. But anyway, it's just a sweet little sweater. So I I started out January saying I need to finish things that have been sitting for a while. And so you'll see um, a couple of other things that I've worked on. But this was one of them that I, I had done the body, but I hadn't done the sleeves. But I even put the buttons on. Are you so proud yes, of me? Yes, good job. Because that's and always. And the ends and I, you blocked it. I usually do weave in the ends um, sometimes, like when I finish a project. If it's one that I finished it and I'm going to put it away, like, you know, I do with my grandchildren's future grandchildren box, then I sometimes don't put the buttons on and I just figure oh, I'll do it later. <laughs> but I actually did it all the way. So Very it turned good. out so sweet. Oh, I love it. I think that. No, I think it looks pretty true to color. It's close on. It, I it's think it's looking a little, a little softer. The contrast is is higher. Yeah, in the video. it's softer yeah. in person. It's not quite so. It, yeah, high contrast. It's really pretty. It's so Very lovely. Pretty. It'll be a darling little kind of eastery sweater. I would love to make some of these with some little short sleeves. Don't you I think that would it. be cute and little short sleeves for Easter? You know, 
I see pictures of things and I always think oh, when I make oh, them, so they cute. never look quite as good as the picture. This is where I think the pictures don't do it enough justice, the pattern. Oh, it's yeah. Because seeing it in person, it is way cuter than I thought it was. Like, <laughs> way cuter. Like, I love it. Because it's a cute design, seeing it online. And Lisa does a really great job with her photographs. I think she does a really she great does. job with it. Um but seeing it in person, I love it even more. So Yes. And Lisa is very detailed mm -hmm. in her pattern writing. And sometimes for my personality, it's almost too many details just because I tend to want the big, the picture. big picture and then just let me knit it. But I actually, I learned something new in this pattern because of her details, which was um, how to do your underarm stitches so that you don't get a hole. And uh, I it, make one then. it looks so nice. Look at that. And there were no, it wasn't like I had to go back. Usually in my underarm stitches, I have to go back and um, sew up, close it up, a close bit. it up a little bit. Um, you still do have a big, bigger, so let's see if I can show this, a slightly larger stitch here and there. It's because it's going but, from knitting this direction to going right, that direction. Right, exactly. But it's so, I did not have to close up any holes. This is part of the Oh no, that's, yeah, that's the end of that little lace repeat. So anyway, it, it, that was awesome for me to learn that. And I, um, I, I actually used that again in another finished object. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend this. She's linked to a tutorial for it and then explains it as well. So it's a great fun little pattern. And the beret is a dar is darling. I have another entire skein of this. Cause I wasn't, when I dyed the yarn for it for mine, I wasn't sure if I, what size I was planning on knitting. Um, but I have another entire skein, so I'll be able to do the little beret and still have some leftovers. It didn't take a full skein for that one? Did you say? It, I, I don't remember exactly. I mean, I think there was a little bit of leftover. It was probably a full skein for this, but I had dyed two. And so anyway, it's just so cute. And that DK is just so squishy and Oh, it's just so fun. Anyway, so yay! Linnea and Monet's Garden by Lisa from Dole Valley Girl Knits. That's that pattern. All right, I finished my pair of socks. I have been calling this colorway Sherbet Santa because um, this is from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns uh, because the picture they had had a picture of a Santa on it. So I was mistaken. It's Vintage Christmas is the colorway. And I started a pair of socks. It just has little flecks. That's so cute. this green and teal with peaches and pinks and creams. And um, I mentioned it was going to be socks for me. So I'm like, I, it's so pretty. I want them to be for me. But because I really love my mom... <laughs> She didn't ask for them. I just really love my mom and she's the best. So I ended up making them for her. So I gave her the socks already. They are um, the cabled socks by Vanilla Wool. It's called French Meringue Socks. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I did is I wound the yarn into a cake and I pulled it from one end for the cuff and the toe on both of the socks and I pulled from the other end of the cake for the body of the sock. Because if you see on the picture, I think you can see on the picture that it had less speckling. So hmm. you may not be able to, but um, it had less speckling. So I wanted the socks to match. So I did that to ensure that they would. And then I still have a good amount of yarn left. It's beautiful. I love my leftovers so much. Yes. It is a problem and I'm working to remedy that. <laughs> I've hoarded them for years because I love them. Like I'll do swaps with people and I'll buy new yarn or dye new skeins <laughs> instead of, for minis, instead of using my precious That's leftovers. That's this basket right here for me. <laughs> I love Why it. Why <laughs> is it? Like I've already knit with it. It's okay, but I just love it so much. So I, I started something. They are treasures. They are, they're treasures. It just makes me laugh because they're like, you know, do a swap and I could wind off 20 grams 
and stash down and instead I buy 20 grams more or dye 20 grams more. I am the same way though. Well, <laughs> I, I don't really do swaps, but. I love um, swaps. I haven't done as many this year. Yeah, I've just had to, I think it's been over a year for me. I've had to kind of take a breath from that, but. Yeah, I did a ton, like, I didn't do a lot this last year. The years before, I did a lot. But that's also where I made some really good friends. Oh, and to yeah. Me, that's what it was about. It wasn't about getting stuff. It was about making friends. And so that's what I've loved about mm. it. And I love the idea of, of finding special treasures or collecting things or creating something. That is, that is really fun. Yeah. That part. You're right. Yeah. So that's what I enjoy about them. But, yeah. I, in 2019, kept track of my shipping <laughs> for swaps. You shouldn't do that. It's like calculating how much a blanket costs that you're going to knit. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. don't do it. That's when I went, <laughs> I have to reduce the number of swaps because that was just the shipping. <laughs> I know. You really have to look at it differently. We had to talk about this, about doing like crocheted blankets. Like if you're crocheting a granny stripe blanket, for example, and you're using 20 gram minis or 10 gram, whatever, yarn. hand dyed yarn. Don't calculate that because you're not getting an accurate picture. Because the point is that you're not buying a blanket. Mm -hmm. You're paying for your hobby. And so, like, if you were going to think about how many hours of enjoyment you get from the making of it. Well, if we think that's about, what you figure out. about swimming, golfing, or golfing, skiing, any of those things, you go and you enjoy doing it. But when you come home... You don't do you have, have anything for more? No. But when you do this, yes. in the end, the bonus is you have a finished right. project. So you have like to think of item. that finished item as the bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the only way to keep saying, don't think about it. All right. <laughs> Unless you are a, if you're a process knitter, but if you are a project knitter. Like or a maker, finished, like, yeah. Like I make this not because I enjoy it, but because I want the item. That's another story. Yeah. If that's the case, just buy it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I finished my, I'm calling these my ugly Christmas socks, even though they're not ugly, they're cute, but in a very ugly Christmas sweater <laughs> kind of way. I love them. This yarn was a gift from my lovely friend, Renee. It was a Christmas present and it, um, the stripe is this, this self-striping is Area 51 Fibers called Christmas at the Movies. So this is the tag for it. And I, this is the sturdy alien base, which I just <laughs> love. It's so fun. Sturdy alien. Oh, my goodness. So it's just an 80-20. It's because it's Area 51. Yeah, right? Area so 51. Really I love themed things. I do, too. I mean, themes you know. are my favorite. They really are. So that's the stripe. And then the green that I used for the heel and the toe is a Cascade Heritage Superwash Merino and Nylon 7525. And it's color 5722. Very inventive. So anyway, those were really fun to knit. And I'll have them now for next Christmas. Um, last year I made... Oh, Mustache Yarns did their, it was something Hobbit Advent mm -hmm. yarn. Was it a very Hobbit Christmas? Something like that. I don't remember right now. I did I did include those in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. But it, it has a similar, they're different, but a similar kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, not they're not my typical style, but at Christmas time, I love them. And so these are really fun. I'm excited to have those put aside. And um, I just, normally I really enjoy knitting texture or lace or cables or something in my socks. But with the stripes, it's you just really want those stripes to show. So I just did stockinette. And as always, I put cast on 64 stitches and used a 2.25 millimeter set of needles. So it's a robust. Yarn. It is. It's I more. Like it. Well, it's the strong, a sturdy alien. So it's a sturdy alien yarn. <laughs> what is a sturdy alien made of? Eighty twenty superwash merino nylon. But it is. It does have a little bit more of a slightly rustic. So it may not. It's be not like one a of those fine wool. Which yeah, it's not one of those that's just like feels like it's melting in your hands. But it has a nice, a really yeah. nice feel to it. Yeah, really nice. Um, so those were fun. So when you were saying the color number. Yes. And you're like very, very inventive. Yes. 
that reminded me of the first time years ago I saw on a company lit like a product listing where it said colorway and, and it was like for a blender and it was pink or blue and they like colorway blush or something and what I was like what's the point of colorway why are they yeah. calling it colorway why don't they just <laughs> call it pink or blue <laughs> and I thought that was the most ridiculous thing just call it pink just call it blue <laughs> but now I understand well okay I understand for a lot of things if it's just pink or it's just blue and it's a blender just call it that. Right. Pink, yeah, color. <laughs> yes. Um, but for fabrics or... Fabrics, yeah. yarns, especially where it's not just a single color. Right, exactly. Or say you have a collection of things and it's inspired by something or whatever. Or you have six or, pinks and they fade from one pink to another pink. You know, yeah, like... Yeah, but right. you have one pink blender and one blue blender. Call it pink and call it blue. Truth. But <laughs> I really was so confused. Like, colorway? <laughs> that's really dumb <laughs> here I am yeah anyways. industry standard from a design perspective is where that comes from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well right. and my husband's like what's the Pantone <laughs> you're right <laughs> he comes from a printer's perspective <laughs> yes he's like what are the CMYK values what are the <laughs> or he'll look at something he's like I think the CMYK value for that is <laughs> or when he talks plastics I love when he talks plastics <laughs> Talk plastics to me, honey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I have a pile over here in my super cute rainbow bag. This was a bag that I did for a um not a collection, a monthly a bag, bag of, the month. of the month. <laughs> that was beautiful. It's a bag of the month club. And it came with like I it was themed each month. It was like a certain holiday or something like that. And it had um, a mini skein with it and some other stuff. And so anyways, this was the last one I did. And that was for March a couple years ago. So well, cute. This year, because there is the Rainbow Sock Chronicles hosted by Jewels of So Sweet Violet and Kelly from Lay Family Yarns, I pulled it out again. And I to get my nail. And if you are not aware, it's the whole idea of this is once a month there is a color theme. We're not saying a colorway, just a color theme. Emily has a fancy watch. Sorry, you have to hear my watch. <gasps> it's eleven thirty-four. <laughs> Sorry, like, it's Minnie Mouse. She's, she's gonna dancing. do her little dance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So but I love it so much. My phone, the text. Anytime I get a text, it goes, "Oh boy!" <laughs> oh, cute. That's cute. I, I want. I want I that. It. I need that. Okay, so each month there is a color theme, and it starts with pink, then goes to red in February, and then like a peach in March, and then pink, I don't know. orange. I don't know. Yeah, you'll have to but, go to Jules. Um, and you knit a sock in that month for that colorway. And a pair of socks, a pair, a pair of socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's mine. I went super pink, super bold. Cute. And I was going to use a super soft, dainty pink. And then I was going through my scraps because I thought, oh, I was looking through them for something else for my kids to all pull out colors that they wanted. And I started going through my scraps and I found these three colors that I just loved and so I remembered cute. how much I loved them and thought they would look so great together. Um, I thought this one was from my friend um, from Crystal Vintage Fairy LLC, but it's not actually. This was a Knit Picks um, one, Hawthorne Fingering in Park Rose. I forgot about that one. I you used, put that in a shawl. I didn't did. You? I put that in my Good Vibes shawl. I, I believe that was that. Good Vibes shawl. And then this one was Hedgehog Fibers, don't know the name, the colorway. And then this one was a mini that I don't remember where it This came might be from. Jeannie, but I could be wrong. And this is a colorway that my daughter picked out for socks that she wanted. Actually, she picked out these two, now that I think about it. Cute. This, I bought these at, it's downtown, or right? Blazing Needles. Blazing Needles. I bought these two at Blazing Needles. Mm -hmm. So... I measured, I weighed out the yarn and figured out how much I would need and look how close, I mean, I showed you, this is how much I had left, but I've knit two pair of socks. That's fantastic. So 
yeah, love them. So I just kind of made up my own pattern. This is a like passing a slip or a yarn over over some stitches. This is just an eyelet. Um, I just threw in some stitches. I was going to just do a vanilla sock, but thought, no, I'll just throw on some texture. That's and fun. I love them. Cute. So January is done. I have my February yarn picked out. And um, I was going to say something about that. Oh, I got the cutest rainbow bag for my birthday from my friend Becky. And I showed it on my... Um, Fairy, my fairy tale chronicles youtube channel cute it's very cute so now i have two rainbow bags i've been using let's see if i can get to it i have a hard time because i'm kind of crammed here in the corner i couldn't move to the left a bit and then here. we would be centered properly <laughs> i'm gonna pull stuff out here this is the bag i've been using for my rainbow which is from jewels from Perfect. so sweet violet and it has a little rainbow pin on it a little so sweet violet tag right there and she made these with Liberty prints and I got that from her a couple years ago. Oh, I have to sneeze. I hate that. You do it. <coughs> Sorry. I was going to stare at you and then it wouldn't happen. But then I oh. said that would be cool. These are my pink socks for January. <laughs> and they are all from my scraps. And um, most of them are Yarnbrary, but there's a couple of others thrown in. Actually, I think they're all Yarnbrary except for this one which is from ruby and roses and this one which is also a hedgehog fibers that's teacup and the rest are all yarn berry colors no i lied this one i think is you one of yours or at least it's one you gave me this really vibrant pink one it was okay. one of the minis you gave me it's not one that i sell i probably just dyed some well it's I do cute that. so anyway that is mine and um just going with the pink theme. I don't know if I'll do scrap. I don't think I'll do scrappy socks for every month or even stripey socks for every month, but I love the idea of the rainbow sock chronicles. And yeah, one thing that, that um, Jules and Kelly have both talked about is that at the end of the year, you kind of want to lay them out almost like a like clock. A so you can have a get, get a good picture of all of them in a circle and that will be super fun. Well, with that in mind, I wanted them to all be like one yarn. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of ruined that with these, but I decided I don't care because I love yeah, them. Yeah. So I'm going to knit what I love to knit with. But I am going to try to not wear any of these socks. I'm going to save them and take a picture of them. And then at the end of the year, I'll put them into rotation because let's face it. It's not like I don't have some socks to wear and I can knit other ones as well. You know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? Because I'm too impatient. What? I'm going to take a picture directly over it, and then I'm going to cut out around and Photoshop a clock of it so I can wear That's my socks. Good. <laughs> because you can Photoshop. It'd be easier for me to just not wear the socks than to try and figure out how to Photoshop it. As soon as I finish a pair of socks, I want to wear them. I know, and I usually do I'm too, too but I thought, yeah, this will be this will be a funny thing. And it'll be nice for me too, like when it gets to the end of the year, it'll be like, Merry Christmas All to me, socks. 12 new pair of socks. So... Oh, they're fun. I like that they're not, like, I just literally picked pinks. They're not all colors I would normally put together. And this one looks purple. And yet, it only looks purple because it's next to the peachy. peachier ones, you know, because in other... It's just a cool tone It's pink, a cool tone pink. And then warm toned pinks. And then... Yeah. So normally I would not have put these together, but I really love how they turned out. So, oh, they're fun. They're really fun. And I have to say, since I watched Kay of Crazy Sock Lady, her tutorial on how she weaves in her ends on scrappy socks and started doing it that way, I don't dread it as much. It just goes, I don't know, it was, I think I've mentioned this before, but it kind of gave me permission to do them in a little bit different way in case I needed the permission somehow. And um, since then, I really don't mind making them. I, I enjoy them a lot more. Speaking of permission, I do have to say... Maybe I'll go on a little rant here. Okay. Maybe not a rant, but <laughs> I remember when I was first sewing. Well, that was when I was a kid. But when I was older mm -hmm. and I was sewing and I was quilting and making clothing. And I remember always thinking, oh, I don't want to show this to anybody who sews or who, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't do this the right way. The or right I didn't do... way. And one day I had this moment where I was like, 
who determined what the right and wrong way was and who gave them the authority and permission to tell the rest of the world what was the right and the wrong way. I was like, I understand like tried and, you know, tried and tested mm -hmm. that something works and maybe something doesn't work for a different reason, but making it a right way or a wrong way, I think is completely ridiculous. And so when I just had that moment, I went, I don't care what anybody thinks of <laughs> the method I used. Did it turn out? Yes. Then great. Yeah. I don't care uh, if you use a sock knitting machine or if you knit something by hand. I don't care if you English paper piece by hand or you sew your hex fees together by machine. I don't care. They're all the right way. <laughs> You or have my how permission. you hold your crochet hook <laughs> how you or how you yarn. tension your yarn right i i just think that is kind of ridiculous that we allow somebody else to determine for us something we can and can't do based on someone else's perception or yeah i, I don't know so yes we can look to people to learn from but i don't think that that yeah that doesn't mean that they're the end all authority on anything yes. so yeah i that's that's my rant that, that was i mean that for me that was a big thing with crochet because that's where i started kind of and uh i remember many times being told that i hold my hook wrong yeah we've talked about that before. <laughs> I'm like, oh, i hold it just fine it doesn't hurt my hand the, that doesn't hurt my hand but it doesn't hurt my hand and all the stitches get made so i guess it doesn't really matter does it <laughs> If you're looking for permission, don't because you don't mm -hmm. need permission to do something however you feel like doing it. So. Well, and I have a friend who she she knits <laughs> basically the way she knits. And I can't remember how it is, but she twists all of her stitches like she knits through the, the wrong leg. But then when she purls it, she goes through. And so they still end up laying the same way. She just does it in a different way. Does that mean she does it wrong? No. Do you have a tiny crochet hook? Yes, but I do not have it right here. It is over there. Uh, I'm too lazy. <laughs> do I have it's not that I'm too lazy. It's whoa, that there whoa, whoa, whoa. is an I obstacle have... here. Yes. A mountain of bags. Here, I have this. <gasps> oh, good job. It's Emily. not that tiny. But... It's okay. It'll oh, look. I even have this tiny one. Look at okay. that. I do have one. You win. I'm going to chicken dinner. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, I don't have any more finished objects. I got some more. I'll show you some more. Okay. Okay. So this one is another object that is from the, this is my longest standing work in progress. This is a Mietta cardigan. This is by a pattern by Andy Satterland. And I actually have only steam blocked this. So it will lay even nicer and open up even more when I wet block it. But I wanted to show it to you and I hadn't had a chance to do that yet. Um, here, let me show you the pattern. So again, Nieta, it's just in black and white. This is by Andy Satterland. She does really fun kind of vintage cuts, you know, um, with bus darts and often high-waisted, very fitted. Years and years ago, six years ago, I knit this pattern for my daughter um, who at the time was 16, 15, 16 at the time. And, um, she loved it. She wore it all the time. And so I decided to make her another one, but I was still kind of a new enough knitter that I didn't, I mean, it was one of my very earliest garments I ever knit and I didn't really get gauge. I didn't understand. That's what I mean by get. I didn't understand gauge properly. So I just was like, well, this yarn looks like it's probably DK and that one's probably DK. So let's go ahead and knit it. Well, it's much, much smaller. And so I knit the body of it five and a half years ago. And then she tried it on and it did not fit her. And so I put it away and it hibernated. Last spring, um, when we got shut down, you know, everything shut down with COVID, I got it out and knit one sleeve and then put it away again. <laughs> and then I knit the other sleeve just the other day. And I realized I had done um, the wrong cuff and had bound off wrong. And so I had to knit, re-knit the cuff on this one as well. And I wanted to show you something really fun about this because I want to show you this rib and what it looks like. Could you yeah, help me hold that down? Because it's different. 
I really love this. This is not according to the pattern. When I, let's see if I, you I'm hold like, that and I'm going to hold this. Hold, okay. Okay. okay I want to just hold this rib out so you can kind of look at it. It looks kind of braided, doesn't it? Oh, it's so pretty. I love that ribbing. So this, I don't know if there's an official technical term for this. This is called knitting twisted rib wrong. But in my head, I call it half twisted rib. Maybe it's a thing and I just don't know that. All this is, is that normally when you're knitting twisted rib, you knit through the back loop and you do that every row. But in this case, I've knit through the back loop on one row and then just knit normal on the second mm. row and then back loop in second. And it gives this very kind of braided. It's really pretty. Look to it. So I had done that on the bottom of this. I've actually knit another sweater with my rib like that. I just think it's really pretty. But then when I knit the, the sleeve and the cuff last year, I just did normal twisted rib. So I and didn't pick up on the fact that they wouldn't match. So that was what I had to go back and change was to do the every other. This is, called, it's alpaca and it's got all kinds of fuzzies. Every other row. So back loop one row, just knit regular. And, and when you're working in the round, um, you have to really pay attention to that when you're working back and forth it's easy because you do the twisted rib on the front and then just regular on the back so anyway that's um this cardigan and i look again what does it have on it buttons, buttons. i even put the buttons on <laughs> i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with it yet um but it has these bust darts in it it just fits they fit really cute because it doesn't fit Aria now. No, it's too small for Aria. And it's not really an Abby style. It's a little too girly girly for Abby. So I'm not quite sure. It's okay. I'll save it for a gift. It might be for my daughter-in-law if she likes it. We'll figure that out. But I finally finished it after five and a half years. <laughs> It's a long, long time to have a sweater sitting there. Yeah, well, I finally finished my blanket, so that only took me <laughs> Good <four> job. Years. <laughs> <laughs> Good job finishing your blanket. Thanks, Mandy, again. <laughs> I won't take credit. I'm just being silly. All right. Um, another finished object I have is this little doll. I went through a weird phase back in December where I was like, I have to crochet a doll. <laughs> it was like an obsession. It was. It's like, I would think about it at night. I would lay there dreaming about how can I crochet this doll? And then anyway, it was a weird thing. <laughs> and I kept looking at patterns and looking at patterns and I didn't really find anything I liked. So I ended up just making it. And I, I watched a couple of tutorials. And I talked to my friend again, Mandy, we're talking, hi, Mandy. We're talking about you a lot today. Um, <laughs> who has done a lot of dolls and has since given me her doll pattern, but I just made her up, but she's so cute. I think she's adorable. So she just crocheted. She doesn't have any undies. If I were to do it again, I would crochet undies and um, this little dress and her little shoes. And her hair is all in these little twists. I think she needs a cardigan. And I think she needs a little like dainty flower crown, crocheted flower crown. That would be really cute. So um, she's all out of fingering weight yarn, all out of yarnberry fingering weight. This is um, my Burnett colorway. And then this is um, just Jane. And this is, what is this? This is the mini for my maple sugar party mm. sock set. And I think she's sweet. She has little ears. So I've written down my notes on what I did so I could replicate it. I think she's just darling. I don't know why, but I just really love her. <laughs> I don't know why I got this obsession. There's some things I would do a little differently next time, but not too bad for having never made a crocheted doll before. She and doesn't just... have a floppy neck. That's really impressive. She has a little bit floppy but not really. Yeah. I mean, it's very firm crochet. The thing I like about this though, is that over time, like if she were to be carried around and loved on by a little girl, 
she would get softer and softer and softer. Mm -hmm. I would like, she's, she's stuffed with just fiber fill, but I would really like to make another one and stuff her with wool. So it was just entirely wool and, you know, different hair and different things, but I think she's sweet. So I'm probably, I'm definitely going to make more. Um, but I just like her. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. Her little ears are adorable. I know they're kind of fun. I think I need to move them all down, but that's okay. Get overly analytical. All right. And then the next, you don't have, you want me to keep going, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't have any more finished. So I also yes. finished these pillowcases. Um, if you remember, we went through that. Okay. <laughs> that, that was, was fun. dramatic. <laughs> okay. We went through the pillowcase f kind of frenzy. You started it. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> You have, do you, is, did you put pillowcase tutorials on My Fairy Tale Chronicles? I did, yeah. yeah. And um, so at the time, it was another one of these unfinished projects where I had cut out six and sewn them, but then hadn't gone back and done the hem stitching and the crocheted border. So I just went ahead and each one of them has a slightly different border. This one's two layers. Oh my gosh, I feel like there's hair everywhere. I don't even have pets. I can't even blame them. It's mine. That one. I like this little cute. This one's my very favorite though. I Isn't do that love pretty? scallops. And a little bird. Anyway. It's very pretty. So those are fun. I'm definitely making more of those. I've, I've gotten a lot them. faster. I've been using my other three all the time, but do you feel like you sleep more like a princess when you use those? I love them especially, like there's been a couple times where I've had to sleep away from home, you know, where we've traveled or whatever. <laughs> and I always, I have always taken my own pillow when I travel. And so I really love like, yes, these are my beautiful pillows. <laughs> just really enjoy them. I like to take naps on them. Oh, they're just so nice. it feels nice. more luxurious to take it's a nap true. on a crochet edged pillowcase. <laughs> With a handmade quilt. That's my yes, other thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, they're just so, <laughs> ooh. I think that Aria is probably going to claim this one. She has just been drooling over it. If I let her. I don't take but enough I love naps. the fabrics. I need to go buy more fabric and make more. I just. They're really pretty. I've and they're so them. fun and they're great for gifts. But then once you make them, because you have the, uh, this, I say you. Okay, mm -hmm. once I make them and I buy all this fabric, like, ooh, this is going to be a good gift and this is going to be a good you gift. You don't want to give it away. Yeah, so I have quite a stack of them. I don't need any more, but they're so nice to make and have and they look so pretty all stacked up there. <laughs> well, and the nice thing about them is they're relatively quick. You know, yeah. they're, you get that little bit of fiber, you know, fun, but... You're only doing this much. And it's not expensive. Like, no, it depends on the no, fabric no. that you buy, but you use a little less than a yard. Right. And then how expensive is this crochet get your, thread get your from coupon. Hobby Lobby? Uh -huh. And when it goes on sale, that's when I bought, like, 10 or 12 right. of these. And, and then you share with your sister when you need another you color. That. <laughs> that's what we do. We're like, do you have this color? And do you have that color? Right. Because this so, one, oh wait, this one is mine. But then there's like the apple-y, like darker, yeah. kind of more vibrant green that I have in one of my other pillowcases, the one that's on my bed right now, that um, one that was I had. one that you had, and you borrowed this one. Yeah, And then I've just got shared. a lilac one, and then mm -hmm. you have some other, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's not, it's not that expensive. Nope. So it's okay to make dozens of them. <laughs> dozens. I only have a half dozen now. Okay. I need to make more. <laughs> I really do. I might go to the fabric store later. I have some fabric that I bought when I was on a trip. On a trip, it was like forty-five minutes ago with Margaret. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like forty-five minutes away with Margaret. We bought away. not ago. Uh, we went to a fabric shop and they had Tilda fabric there. Ooh, yeah. I love Tilda fabric so much. So I have a stack of those fabrics that I still need to make pillowcases with, but it's so pretty. I almost don't want to cut into it. I know that's the problem. It's like, like those skeins you're saving. Yeah. This is one of my skeins that I'm saving. It's also a Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit, but look at it. It's so pretty. It's called apple blossom. And I'm just like, yeah, that's one of those that it's just right there. Cause I look at it all the time and I'm. Well, and I ooh. do say that more beautiful fabric is just around yes. the corner. It's coming out tomorrow. More beautiful yarn will be coming out tomorrow, so it's okay. Um, but sometimes 
just the fabric laid out or just the skeins how they are not wound into cakes they are art in and of themselves yes and you want to enjoy it fully so, yes right yes. so i like to enjoy them for a while before using them and then i use yes. them and enjoy while i'm using it and then i enjoy it with whatever i've made i agree all right this is my last finished object which is a headband love it more scrap this was scrap buster. I am not going to put this on right now because my hair is honestly just too glorious to mess with. It's pretty fabulous. It's pretty You're fabulous. Like a country star diva right I now. I know. I kind of feel like I need to sing some sad songs about losing my love and yeah, you're driving my truck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just a little headband. <laughs> I don't wear a lot of hats um, because I tend to wear my hair up a lot, and they just I don't really love the kind of messy bun. I mean, I don't wear my hair up for like a messy bun style hat. I wear it up. <laughs> if that makes sense. So I decided to make a headband and I've looked at a bunch of pictures and then just kind of figured it out. I didn't have a pattern. Um, I kind of wrote my own pattern for this, um, but it's just a simple little knotted. It's not really knotted, but um, headband. And I knit it. It's double knit. So it's two layers of fabric. So you didn't knit it in the round. You I did not knit it in the round. I double knit it. I have one of these in progress, so I'll show that in a minute. Um, but it's two skeins of fingering weight yarn held together. And then I'm knitting that on a US size eight um, needle. And this is awesome. And I haven't had an opportunity to wear it yet, but my daughter wore it yesterday all day long and she looked darling in it. And it was really great because she was out in the cold quite a bit yesterday. So, but it's just perfect to wear down kind of over your ears. Keep your ears warm. The beauty of holding two fingering weight yarns together is that depending on what you hold together, you the possibilities are endless. Really? of so the true. look the final look that you get mm -hmm. and then you can use up smaller amounts of yarn that you may not yep. use otherwise but it also makes a nice fabric like it feels different than dk it like, really does i think it has a, a, it's a fluffier drapier, squishier yeah drapier i think maybe. it drapes differently it just yeah it just has something different about it i do hats that way a lot it's very instead nice. of using dk yarn and uh, yeah, it just does feel different than ones that I make. Just it's really DK. nice. But anyway, it's super fun. And I really enjoyed working on it, doing the double knitting. So that was really fun. And like I said, I'll show you that to you in a little bit. But that why is don't all. You, since that's the last finished object, sure. why don't you start our um, works in progress and Sounds show. Sounds good. I will do that. Working on. So this is the one I'm working on now. And again, it's two, two um, fingering weight yarns held together. I am using this yarn. This is Dragon Horde yarn, and I think this is in her Merry and Birthday colorway. Here, what do you want me? You hold. Oh, okay, okay, there. Perfect. And then I'm using this, which is a Cascade Heritage <clears throat> in just blue. And I really like how they're working together because you still get the speckles from this one but you get it kind of toned down a little bit from that one. Mm -hmm. And this was very similar to what I did here where I had a speckled yarn and then a tonal yarn, but the tonal yarn matched the speckly yarn it's really swirling. well. I know it kind of is. This one did too. If you look at it, you can kind of see. Let me see. Some, but it's, it's just gentle enough. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's fun. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. Just looking at it here, I don't even see that. Right. But on here, this is this the camera creates a higher contrast. It really does. So yeah. It pulls things out a little. So bit So you can see the swirl kind of coming up here. But really, once you see it kind of on, you, you it'll disappear. It'll disappear. But I do like I, I like when things do that if they do it evenly or create yes. something rather than starting to swirl and then you and then a flash and, and then yeah, like, yeah exactly see more hair. <sighs> what it happens when you're a country you're music just, star. Yeah, I know your DNA is on everything. Everybody. You're just leaving it everywhere. <laughs> so if you notice, this is on one needle, even though it's two layers of fabric and this is double knitting. And I did, I, this is, I learned double knitting doing this. So I have heard of double knitting and I've heard people say, well, it's just like knitting and purling. And I thought, okay, I don't 
don't really understand how double knitting works. I just didn't. But um, in my sweater that I'm working on, there's a teensy bit of this stitch going down just, and it's creating I-cord basically down the front of it. And I thought, well, that would work really nicely, I think, for a headband. So I tried just it. making it wider. Just making it wide, yeah. So um, what happens is I slip the first stitch purl-wise on my needle with the yarn in front. So I'm not knitting that first stitch, but then I move my yarn to the back and then I knit it. And then I move my yarn to the front and slip the next stitch and then move my yarn to the back and knit it. So it is very much like purling and knitting, except for every time when you're quote unquote purling, you're not actually purling the stitch, you're just slipping it. So do you have to have an odd number of stitches? No, you have an even number of stitches. So you start with the slipping and end with a knit. And okay. then on the other side, you start with a slip and end with a knit. So it's just the same thing around and around and around. So it basically, you could achieve the same thing by having it on two needles and just knitting every stitch in a round. But this so, way, you're only on one needle and it just... You don't have to deal with the cable or You're anything. not dealing with cables. You're not dealing with any of that. And it made me start to think, what are the possibilities here with socks. I just, because I'm working on a sock here and I'm like, the width of that. Yes. So you'd have to think about that. I, I, I really kind of want to try that. Could you, quote unquote, double knit the leg of your sock? And the foot, but when you come to the heel. Now, would, the would difference to... being that when I cast on, I just cast on. So it's sealed up. And when I bind off, I'll just bind well, off. Look, that makes a great toe right there. <laughs> Well, I mean, you really could do some interesting things with this. I'm really interested to know and to kind of play with that. At the very least, see, some hair is everywhere. Um, at the very least, you could cast it on and then put them all on one needle and just do every other stitch. That it's kind of an interesting. interesting idea. But look at the edge. Because there's no, um, no cable, there's no running. There's no, like, uh, what's the... Ladder. Ladders at all. There's no ladders there at all. It's super smooth. Is she doing a dance still? I, I don't know. I'm just getting She's... messages. I'm fascinated by Minnie Mouse and her doing a dance because it's super cute. Um, that is interesting to think about. Now, then that but, would mean you would be sliding your yarn back and forward every step. I was going to so say, because that that's really the other thing. It's kind of all. like purling knitting, like doing ribbing for an yeah. entire sock, yes. which that's tiring on my hands to do that. Yes. So I don't, would it actually save time? No. Right. Would it feel more smooth? It's just an interest, interesting idea, the yeah. concept of it. Well, at the very least, if you only have two DPNs, you could still knit your socks. <laughs> At least a tube of some sort. Yeah. Anyway, by the way, look mm -hmm. at my nails and look at this needle. I tell them, Emily, that they look like an 80s prom queen. Yes. And I meant that 100% as a compliment. But She's I was like, like, I don't know if Deborah means that. Like, I would say that as a compliment. But well, just I Deborah wouldn't means say something like that. Like, wow, 80s prom queen. Like, <laughs> so if it wasn't a compliment, I wouldn't have said it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. But I, she was showing us how they match tonight. So like, fun. They're so cute. <laughs> yes, I'm kind of obsessed with this nail polish, actually. It is the best nail polish I've ever seen. I don't think you, you can't see. It looks kind of metallic. It's just glitter. It's total sparkle. It's so pretty. <laughs> it is. And about as lurid of a pink as you can get. <laughs> All right, so I'm working on socks. And I started the sock... The, Sock Chronicles. What's wrong? Rainbow. Sock Rainbow Chronicles. Sock Chronicles. And I realized I can't knit only socks for myself. My family also loves socks. And I always pick out yarn for them and they're like, oh, I wouldn't have picked that. Thanks, mom. <laughs> they still wear them. So I had everybody come and go through my stash and pick out colors that they wanted. And the goal was I'd knit a pair for myself for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles, and then I would knit one for my family, and then one for myself the next month, one for my family, somebody in the family. Perfect. And so I did the pink pair, and I started one for Claire. So Claire chose, she wanted some thicker socks, 
and I had this skein of yarn that was a gift from my friend Mandy. <laughs> Shocker, I know, Mandy. This is the Mandy show now. Um, I was trying to find her label because it's so cute. Okay. I love this label. So Gypsy Heart is her yarn. She doesn't sell online. Look at that Wild West collection. It's so cute. So it's Red River Valley and it's a sport weight, um, superwash merino and nylon, uh, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon and 274 yards for hundred grams. And, um, yeah, that's just so pretty, but because it's sport weight, that meant I would need to figure out a sock pattern and I was looking online, but half the time searching online takes longer than just figuring out my own. So I cast on, um, what did I use? I used a needle and then I thought, oh, this isn't the right size, but it's all I had. Uh, 2.5, a US 2.5, three millimeter, 32 inch cable. Um, that's the one that I used and US 2.5, sorry, US 2.5, three millimeter. Oh, okay. I had to think through that. And I thought that I needed a slightly larger one for the stitch count. Cause I was doing two by two ribbing and it was so loose and baggy. Mm. And then I realized I didn't have that needle and I, anyways, so I switched to one by one rib and that fixed it hundred percent. Interesting. <laughs> that was interesting. I mean, I knit quite a bit, ripped it all back, thought I was going to have to do a different stitch count, but I, I didn't end up having to. So I have an odd number. What did, I have my notes. Let's see. I did 46 stitches. Um, I did 18 rounds of one by one ribbing. And this is a, a tight sock. I mean, it's the gauge is pretty pretty tight, which is good because she wears them all the time and in boots. So going up one needle size would be better, I think, for the gauge and for my hands, but it would be too big and I need to change the stitch count. Um, and then I got this book from Mandy. <laughs> She's the one that did my um, Christmas countdown swap. And so I looked through this book and picked out the Art Deco stitch pattern in here and I adapted it. So I didn't do it completely the same, but I adapted it to go down the back of the sock. And I did it down the back. It has bobbles. So I figured down the front might be obnoxious and I didn't want it, you know, interfering with the heel so I didn't do the last bobble down here and um yeah that's what I did <laughs> so these go them. pretty fast unless you knit the second sock with this all on the front oh no so I did it and got to here I think and realized that's supposed to be on the back oh no so I ripped it back to the, to right above the heel because this was the front I ripped it back and then switched it so that the heel was on the back instead of instead of here so this this pair was almost done but anyways so it sat there for a while but now it's almost done again so she wears her socks every single day at work and she said her feet are always cold because she's out in a warehouse so she wanted thicker mm -hmm. ones and that's why she wears her wool socks so Perfect. Those are lovely. They're really pretty. So it's nice to just have a little pattern to just give you something fun to do, but I don't True. like it to be too crazy to where I have to only focus on that all the time. So slip stitches I did, I'll tell you how many on the heel, 12 slip stitches on the heel flap. So that means so I did 20, 24 rows. rows. Um, the thing is that means that there's 23 stitches on each needle mm. so that makes it kind of obnoxious when you're doing 
the heel and you're picking up on the sides and you're counting and decreasing and everything because it's hard to you can't make it even yeah so mm -hmm. you have to pay a lot closer attention to that but because there's not as many rows i don't have to pay attention for as long that works out just fine <laughs> so. very cute i love the bobble those bobbles are very fun 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 all right this sweater is going to be done someday someday somewhere it's way faster than i've ever knit a sweater oh it's the longest sweater ever i don't even know how to show it to you so i'm trying to knit this sweater it's supposed to be down to my thigh you know mid thigh length so nice long sweater this is grace by Ririko, r-i-r-i-k-o and it is yeah definitely higher contrast on video than it is in person mm -hmm. um but it's got this gorgeous cabling which i don't know if you can really see very well anyway and and as we go down the cabling is getting bigger and bigger and wider and wider it's turning a line and i just started the ribbing like i've done one row of the ribbing so i'm almost there but what crazy person decides to knit a plus size, plus size, long length, fingering weight sweater with cabling every single row? Dumb people, that's who. Well, you're not dumb. But it's going to be gorgeous when I get it done. Smart. I just want to get it done in time to wear it for this winter and not miss winter entirely. I started this in the fall. I mean, I think it was like September or October. Well, my sweater I started last spring, and it won't be done for this winter. It's kind of crazy. So but I have like, like it's taking forever. But I know that you're also not working on it regularly. Yeah, I am yeah. working. I mean, I don't work on this for a long period of time at a time. But I do try to work on it almost every day, which is why it's finally making progress. Mm -hmm. And I will get there. I will. I will. Let's see. Today's Wednesday. In the next week, I'll have the body done and have started the sleeves. So You are someone that enjoys knitting sweaters. I love knitting sweaters. I don't love knitting sweaters. Yeah. I knit them because I want the sweater. So I, yeah. I don't love knitting garments. I do not love alternating skeins in, a, in the middle of a row. I don't enjoy an alternating skeins, but I enjoy hand knit yarn <laughs> or hand dyed yarn. Therefore, you have to alternate skeins. This is my um, Vanity Fair colorway. And um, anyway, it's going to be lovely. I'm excited to have it. I definitely have to add pockets to it. And there is some cabling on the sleeves, but I think it's only in the bottom kind of cuff area. I may or may not do that. We will see. Because I'm really eager to get that done. So that's my other work in progress. I have others. I have, I have one right there, but I left it over there. And I'm not really worried about showing it. So I am actually finishing it. Okay, but I, I have yeah. several. This is, this is where I shine. Works in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on a test knit for Amy. Um... Amy Loudon for ta uh, Taylor S. Studios. Taylor S. Studios. I wanted to get it right. Taylor S. <laughs> Studios. This is her Bifeld mittens. I haven't done the thumb yet on this one, but look how pretty that is. There's cable down the middle with big bobbles on my sockets, so little bobbles. And it's a strand of fingering held together with a strand of mohair. And this is where I used the pretty pink that I was going to use for my socks. So this is the one I was like, oh, that would be so pretty. So I'm using it for this. So this is um, a colorway by, from Kelly of Lay Family Yarns and it's vintage fabric. And the base is a very pale pink. And on camera, it just looks bare, but it's a very pale pink. And then I have this peach mohair that I used that um, was left for my sweater, my daughter's sweater that I knit for her. It was a Whitmore sweater, which was also designed by Amy. And I had um, 70 grams left of that. And so I held those together. I thought 
this gorgeous color. Oh, it's, it's so pretty. So I have finished the left hand. It just needs the thumb. I've got the right hand ready. Like I've just finished the thumb increases. And now I need to put those thumb stitches on hold and just do the rest of the hand. I decided to just do the thumbs at the same time, like one and then the other right away. So I don't forget exactly how I did it. And I think this pattern is coming out this week. I heard. I think so. They just so, did. Um, she just did a bunch of photos and so on. for Yeah, it. It, it's a great pattern um, because Amy wants to be very thorough and make sure that nobody can get confused. She's really good about that. Her patterns have a lot of information for each size. So like instead of like she has has it broken down by size. Here's the instructions for the small for the right hand, instructions for the small for the left hand. Here's the instructions for the medium for the right hand and for the medium for the left hand, you know. Um, and so if you're looking at the pattern how many pages you'd be like, oh, you might wow, think it's how super hard. complicated. Yeah. No, it's just that it's broken down really clearly. And so just look through the pattern, find your size, and then here's your page. And here's mm -hmm. your page if you're a different size or here, you know, and it's charted at 100% like from start to finish. And then it's also start to finish, except for the very, very, very top finish mm. of here and the top finish of the thumb uh, but it's also written out completely all instructions so that's also why you have more pages so you have the option if you want mm -hmm. charted so um for some people i know they'll see like the number of pages and be put off like i just want to knit some mittens and this has got 20 pages this is going to be hard. no it's it is really well written and well thought out they are really beautiful so that should be done very soon which is good because we finally are getting snow i haven't even needed any of my hats I know. or gloves or mittens until this last week for almost the entire winter we had some snow early in november yeah we had a dusting in december and then that was it until just barely right it's been almost nothing it's crazy so like, we good. live in Utah, right? Greatest yeah. snow on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I have more. Sorry, good. it's not you. Yes, it's me. Keep going. Okay. Um, and then I started a hat for Claire. Um, this is a hat that, once again, I hold different strands together to get the weight that I want. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm holding this fingering weight yarn, the inside and the outside together, plus a strand of mohair. So I've got three strands held together for, for this one. And this yarn is... Pie, wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Gypsy Heart. <laughs> Apparently this is the Mandy show. <laughs> it is today. This colorway is You're a Daisy If You Do. It is actually dyed using sagebrush blossoms from Utah here. She hand dyed that, and the pattern is the Father Cables. I have knit this pattern once before for my friend Ashley. We did a, um, a swap one year, all of our knitting group, and this is the hat that I knit for her. This is one where I have to just focus on this. It's, it's just every mm. single stitch mm -hmm. is different all the time so I have to really focus on it so I haven't done much so <laughs> you got started she, she might get it next year but you know <laughs> who is this for again for my daughter Claire for Claire because this is something I think she would really like she'd like the color mm -hmm. and it's beautiful to stay warm out in the warehouse so anyways I've done very little of that one uh, but I did that because it calls for a worsted weight, I think. So two strands of fingering plus the mohair, definitely the mohair kind of fills it out. To That's it one of the nice worsted, things about worsted. mohair yeah. is that it does give it a little bit of extra loft. Yeah. I, I actually do have one work in progress. Let's but, see. Well, you, I'm going to tell you about it and there's going to be video put in here. Okay, let's do that one at the <laughs> okay. end of this That's totally segment, good. this section. Then. Yes, sounds good. 
Okay, here's my last project that I'm working on. So, this is so fun. my plan this year is to use my stash, to like use my scraps, Your to favorite use treasures. my precious minis that I have been hoarding for four <laughs> years now. I have been hoarding them and I've, I, I'm like, I'm gonna do something Ooh, special so with it. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. If I wanted to do sweaters, if I wanted to just make a bajillion striped socks, but I finally decided that the best use would be a blanket because I can use that blanket forever. Socks, I could wear out really quickly. Shawls, sweaters, I may go off of um, or grow out of. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I started a granny stripe blanket. So pretty. So I started this on my birthday celebration while I was getting a pedicure. <laughs> and I had Emily tell me how to do it. An e-hook, 239 cast on. Chains. Doing cast on chains, double crochet. Those were the, those were the notes, but I either counted wrong or something ended up with like two extra. So, you know, I guess I unpicked that. Mm -hmm. Um, and look at my cute little stitch marker. Is that a cupcake? Look. It's a little cupcake. This was a Shoot. gift from a friend, a viewer, who sent this to me for my birthday a couple of years ago. And it's a skein of um, artistic lily yarn in birthday confetti colorway. And I knit Ella a hat out of this. So um, this was with that skein. So I thought I'm gonna keep this on here because I started it at my birthday celebration so fun. so I pulled out all of my minis I started like the top here these are some of the scraps that go in it underneath are minis that I wound so I have a box full to work so when you right say now. scraps these are leftovers from projects this correct? is leftovers from projects and then underneath are minis that I wound that are like 20 gram minis mm -hmm. and here's some more <laughs> minis <laughs> so i've got another bag full of minis here that i can pull from i kept out about 20 25 of them of ones that i just couldn't bear to part with yet but i just was like it's time to use them especially all of them that are just so lovely and so pretty because they'll go in a blanket and i can enjoy it mm -hmm. like gorgeous this is from my advent from Emily. <laughs> this was number nine. What's number nine? I think that one is, hold on. I don't have the paper with me, so. All of a sudden my mind went completely blank. I know what it is, but it's just not coming to me mean. right now. I do that. So I have a whole bunch of these to wind when I start using up ones in Dang, the box. What is that now? Sorry. But, oh, it's so fun. It is so fun. And how, how are you finding, well, you're it's not using 20 gram minis I, right now. You're using scraps. No, I used, so I started 20 gram, or I started with a scrap that had more and I did a thicker stripe. So I did five rows um, plus the foundation row, the chain. And um, I'm not planning on making them all exactly the same. So the 20 gram minis, I want to use up as much as possible. And so I'll do four rows down and back and down and back. Um, and then for the ones where I have more yardage, I will, I'll do like five or six or something like that. So mm -hmm. it will vary in there. Um, but I was worried because Emily's blanket, the, the minis that I, the base that I use has a little bit less yardage and she would run out the last couple of clusters like two yeah last two sometimes even but just one i had this much left mm -hmm. so Great. i have enough uh i think your gauge is a little bit tighter crocheting definitely tighter crocheting okay. than mine is so that would be so weird. i'm gonna hold on to all of these and i will see if amy noble character crafts needs it for her blanket <laughs> <laughs> because i'm not going to her hexy blanket yeah, yeah. Because I don't like waste, but I am not knitting a million things with these little tiny. Like, <laughs> I don't enjoy doing that, <laughs> but some people do. That's so, so fun. That's my last. Oh, but this one, I, I can only do one row. That's it in a day, and then my hand is done. 
so I have to be careful about that. The problem is that it's really fun, and so I'm tempted to do more, mm -hmm. but then the next day it kills my hands. Yeah. So, so I'm only doing one, and that's it. That's going to be hard. So just one direction, <laughs> yep, one row. That's it. So it's going to yeah. be a very slow project, but oh, it's very fun. That is fun. I love this colorway. This one is one of yours, Emily. Yep. Let's this see. is actually, no, that one's from the Advent calendar, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, is this? Yeah, it is. No, no. From this Advent calendar? That's where it was. Deborah, I don't have a brain. I don't know. That one isn't. The other one, by the way, was Christmas, Graham. I knew I knew which oh, okay. one that was. Okay. Ooh, what's a Christmas, Graham? I want one. <laughs> yeah, this yellow one was popcorn that I dyed. Cute. You can't really see the light tinging of browns in some of it, but... Yeah. Okay. Fun. It's so much fun. I'm actually starting another crocheted mint granny stripe blanket. I'm just waiting for my yarn to get here because I'm getting yarn from Kelly, Lay Family Yarns, to do mine. So she's dyeing the same colorway or colorways for each month for the Rainbow Chronicles. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to use to start mine. So hopefully it's on its way. I'm going to um, weave these in today. And my plan is to weave them in. I'll start with it and weave it in. Because crochet is one, like, I don't mind weaving an ends for knitting. Crochet, I can't stand it. I always <sighs> weave my ends when I was doing my blanket. When I finished a color, I wove in the end. Yeah. Like, I couldn't, I would not let myself start another color yeah. until that end was woven in. I mean, it only take a, a minute mm -hmm. to do it. So, but if you wait until after. Yes. Then you would hate, be hating life. The reason I don't like weaving, I mean, we've talked about this. But knitting, it's really obvious where to weave in. Mm-hmm. Crochet, it's not. And I want it to be hidden and I want it to be secure. And I feel like I have to think really hard about it. You know, mm -hmm. like, so that's why I don't like doing it. For me, one of the things I do with crochet that I don't do with knitting. When knitting, when I weave in my ends, I use a rounded tip needle and a blunt needle so that I'm going in between, you know, stitches. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, does that make sense? About. But with crochet, I use a sharp needle. And so that I'm going puncturing through some of the... stitches because I just feel like it's not as secure. Yeah. Um, Crochet, so... you always find ends yes. coming undone. And that has been really helpful because I am I, not my... opposed to using fabric glue on this. No, no. Glue. I am not opposed to putting a dab of glue on there. Some I have people my... would die to hear that because <laughs> some of the experts have said that you can't. And I'm here to tell you that I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> my um, granny stripe blanket is on my family room couch. It gets used almost every single day and my ends have stayed in. Yeah. And I think that's because I used a sharp needle for that. Make sure to split some of the stitches that you're weaving through. Okay, your All right. last one. So I have, I am working on a quilt. And this quilt, um, originally I had intended it. It's using this pattern which is the five fat quarter fun by Amanda, Amanda <laughs> of Jedi craft girl. It's not spelled funny. It's just Amanda. It's just me not being able to speak <laughs> and Amber of Gigi Stimble. And it's just a fun little 30, I think it was 34 by 34 was what the original thing was. And, and um, I pieced it and I put it together. I was planning on a wall hanging quilt for my family room and um, I have a specific spot for it to go. And when I finished it, I thought, oh, I just love this. And it is not at all what I want for my wall. <laughs> so it's super cute. But I am just trying to go with softer colors. But you know me. I mean, we've talked about the fingernail polish. So I really like color. So I started this quilt. I pieced that center, realized it wasn't going to be for my wall. And so I just decided to add some additional borders and I'm turning it into, um, it's a, it's 50 inches square. So it could be uh, probably for a, a baby quilt, um, like a crib size quilt. And it's on my um, quilting frame right now and I've been hand quilting it. And so we're gonna insert a little video right here about that quilt and about it on the frame, the frame itself, because I have had lots of questions about it. I just wanted to share a little bit about this quilt that I am making and quilting. I'm hand quilting it on this frame. And I've had a few people ask me about it when I posted some pictures online. So first of all, the quilt top, it's so cute. It's got a fun little pieced border and it's not bound or anything. It's just raw edges and put together on a, as a sandwich, you know, with my backing and my batting and 
at my top, but this frame is really great. It's called a Q-Snap frame, and it's just made out of PVC plastic, and um, you lay the quilt on it, and then it has these little, um, I don't know what you wanna call them, grips that kind of snap over the edges to hold it in place. And um, you can rotate them out to kind of tighten it up. Q-snap frames make embroidery frames and things like that. So many of you may have seen these before, but it just works out so well for smaller size quilts, um, especially if you're the only person. Yeah, when we were growing up and quilting with our aunts, it was very much um, the big wooden frames that would take up your whole living room and multiple women would sit around it and we would all quilt and or the kids would be playing underneath. But this works great because I can slide it to the side in my room and, and it works really well. When you're hand quilting, um, a, a lot of people have asked me about that. It's really quite simple. Um, I have my left hand underneath and it kind of works from the bottom and I am just touching, going along this, this seam right here. I'm just touching my hand, my finger underneath the quilt with the needle and then rocking it back up. And you just kind of go along, rocking your stitches. And then this is probably one of those things that we talked about earlier about, you know, doing it the wrong way. But I use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull my needle out. It just avoids fatigue on my fingers from pulling. And it's really very simple. You hide your knots in between the layers of the quilt so that you have no knots on the bottom or the top of the quilt. They are just um, hidden in between the layers. So here it is from underneath, rocking those stitches. And I'm just using this hand to kind of touch the needle and then push it back up like that. All right, for today, we really wanted to, um, for our Kindness is Like Sugar segment, spotlight somebody who we have really appreciated and who needs some kindness right now. Normally in our kindness segments, we talk a lot about kindnesses that we have witnessed. And I think this is one of those great cases where we've witnessed kindness, but we also want to be kind. And so today we wanted to talk about Andrea and Andrew from Fruity Knitting. They have a, pay, or a, a YouTube channel, sorry. They have a fantastic YouTube channel that has offered a lot of amazing content for knitters for years. And we just have really enjoyed um, so much of what they have put together. They are going through some really hard times right now. And I mean, a lot of people are experiencing a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. But Andrew has recently been diagnosed with a brain tumor and they are doing everything they can to give him the very best chance. Um, it's not an easy thing, and there's a lot of information that could say that this is a really bad situation for them. But we want to just share with you a little bit about Andrew and Andrea and see what we can do to help them along. The great thing mm -hmm. is that we talk about how um, knitters come together a lot and how we make great friendships and great bonds that it's more than just knitting and so this is a great example of that where it's easy to feel like one person is insignificant and can't do much but when we work together we can do big things and so this yes. is where I think everybody working together can help accomplish big things absolutely and and big things are what it's going to take for them I mean um we, we want to encourage you, first of all, to go to YouTube and look at their videos. Um, you can find them by searching for Fruity Knitting. And um, they have, you know, I don't know what the number is right now, but well over 100 episodes of fantastic content. I mean, they do um, interviews with designers. Um, they teach great con uh, techniques and um, spotlight 
pattern designers, pattern designers, and also um, shepherdesses. <laughs> yeah, also um, knitting traditions from around the world, and lots of beautiful cultural heritage that comes with knitting. So there's just a lot to get from them. But you could also see their most recent update about Andrew and his health there, so that if you are not familiar with fruity knitting, then you can learn more about them not only what they do, but also who they are um, and their their challenges right now. So right now we are asking that anybody who feels like they can would make a donation to Fruity Knitting and you can do that in two ways. You can become a patron of their um, their podcast, which is awesome because you get a lot of benefit from that and it's definitely well worth it. Um, and you can also make a direct donation to them yeah it can be just a one time you don't have mm -hmm. to have a recurring right. patreon account you know right subscription you can find information about their pay to become a patron um through patreon at their website which is just fruity knitting i believe it's fruity knitting.com let me double check that really quickly while she's looking at that when we talk yes. about a donation we're not talking about send you know twenty hundred dollars <laughs> i mean like you do whatever you can do yeah mm -hmm. a if dollar it's two dollars if it, yeah uh, whatever it is mm -hmm. everybody combining together the smallest amount adds up to a big amount absolutely their paypal address i'm just going to put that right here is paypal.me me forward slash fruity knitting and you can also find that on their website at fruityknitting.com. But we would just love to see some miracles happen for Andrea and Andrew and for their daughter, Madeline, who um, they, they contribute so much to the knitting community. And we would love to help contribute to them and yeah. bring some sugar, some and kindness. And she is also requesting that if you're not able to um, donate financially, she is asking for prayers so mm -hmm. you if you can donate financially and pray that's also great or just send your positive healing mm -hmm. thoughts mm -hmm. um just whatever it is that you're able to do uh if we can just all focus good positive energy on their family and on on um, andrew's recovery and his health that would yeah. just be wonderful and Deborah and I both firmly believe that faith really makes miracles. Mm -hmm. And so our combined faith together can do that for this amazing family. So Thanks. thank no, you. They're, they're, they are really great. They're really so. wonderful. <laughs> All, All right. right. We're at the end. It's time for um, shop news. And we do you have any shop <laughs> I news? I have little shop news. I have been closed since just before Christmas so that I could focus on this whole project with my father-in-law's house. And I have just reopened. Um, I have just barely put maple sugar party sock, set. sock sets and um, winter in the big woods sock sets, as well as Hunger Games Club. But unfortunately, Hunger Games is done for January. And um, I said, I will have it. I saw it up there. It's Caesar Flickerman. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you saw it. <laughs> I walked in and was like, what is that? <laughs> you guys, I have a crush on Stanley Tucci. I love him. He is amazing. Everything he's in, he's so good. He's so good. Yeah. He's like a short, bald man. And I just think he is amazing. He is. <laughs> he's really, I, I kind of am like really attracted to him. <laughs> you're, all, him. you're not just like, he doesn't No, I have job. a crush on him. I love him. <laughs> I, I had a crush on Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Well, <laughs> who doesn't? Hello. Even when I was a teenager. I know. Well, like, I had a crush on Phil Collins oh. when I was a teenager, too. Oh, really? Yeah. He always creeped me I out. I know. It's kind of weird. I don't know what it is about him that creeped me out. I knew my husband would be bald, I think, even back then. <laughs> he's not yet, but he's losing it quite a bit. Oh, my husband's... We see the top of his head, and I don't mind at all. I don't either. I, it doesn't bug me one bit. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm gradually restocking the shop is what I should say. I took everything out, and so I'm just adding things back in. So there will be new things pretty much every week. Um, but there are still some sock sets there. That, so. And they're just fabulous. They really are so fun. Ooh, I want that and that and that and that. <laughs> and that. All right. I have reopened, just in case you didn't know. Um, I am still dying small batches not um i 
every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I dye yarn a couple of days every two weeks maybe. So that's kind of my consistent like frequency of mm -hmm. shop updates. And so I'll have a shop update. It sells out because it's small batches and then it's empty for a time, but that's, that's okay. That's, I had to make my peace with that, that my shop would not be stocked all the time. So I, I made my peace with that and that's okay. Um, but since reopening, I've come up with some new colorways. I was going to do everything new and decided it wouldn't all be new, but <laughs> a lot, most of it is because it's just fun to come up it with really new things. Is. So I was going to show you, I have had a shop update since our last podcast. So if you've seen that, then these colorways won't be new to you. So first I have Sour Cherry Fizz. I wanted something that had a lot of reds, but of course pinks, love pinks. So this is one I was thinking I was going to dye for, or um, knit my February socks out of. But because I'm working to use my stash, it's not also a really great business model to use all of your yarn that you dye. Like I have to sell some of it. <laughs> I have a really hard time sometimes parting with some of this. So I'm using my stash. So I'm not going to knit my February socks with these. I might knit some at some point, but. But I, what if your sister wants to knit her February <laughs> socks out of that? <laughs> I, I, so I, now I'm just. Like, They're I, so I really perfect. It's so perfect. Okay, but we'll see. Okay. And then I have um, lemon chiffon pie. I wish the lighting captured it better it it does just just know that it increases the contrast. contrast yeah it's a softer um version then of i did bring back my conversation hearts colorway but it is slightly updated so i just wanted you to know some of my colorways are slightly different so if you were looking to get some because you wanted some more to add to your stash this would not this would not match with it because it's just slightly tweaked and then this one I know. Too. This one is Wish Upon a Star sock set. Okay. <laughs> so cute. Damn, so it's you so have cute. your own star, your own golden star <laughs> that you can wish upon. So the idea of this one, um, I do love this one. When you wish upon a star. But when I was little, how many of you... Did the poem um starlight star bright mm -hmm. first star i see tonight anyways you need to make a wish i did i remember wishing for a puppy which is really funny because i think i just wished for a puppy because every kid kind of had to but i didn't really even want a puppy <laughs> and i ended up getting a puppy so my wish came true but i didn't really even want the like i didn't like the puppy <laughs> That's so funny. I remember wishing for a puppy and not even really wanting one because I was like, oh, first star, I've got to make a wish. Okay, well, I, I wish for a puppy. Anyways, so <laughs> there's that song set. Okay, and then on my birthday, I decided that I was going to dye um, just a colorway that was just kind of free form with some colors that I liked and just see what I got from it. And this is what what I ended up dying. And Emily was mentioning a video. I recorded a video of the process. I don't show every bit of it. I'm just gonna let you know that I left some things out because, you know, I'm not gonna give away all of my secrets, but um, that's on my fairy tale chronicles. And this one is called Life is a Celebration. Super cute. So that one was for my birthday. And then I have brought back my cotton candy mohair and this one is mint I dyed this one before this one's bubblegum I dyed this before but then I have a new colorway and this one is cherry I do have a peach one that I dyed but it's just it didn't turn out as vibrant as I wanted so I'm going to re-dye it before I list that so love my cotton candy mohair and then last but not least um the whole idea of my shop started with minis because minis are my favorite and i haven't been doing as many mini like just individual not not collections of minis so just 
pick and mix kind of minis. So um, I call those gumball minis. So I have a selection of gumball minis. This one is a new colorway. This one's Razzles. That makes me think of 13 going on 30. Yep. <laughs> and then this one is a new one. This one is Sugared Violet. And then this one is one that I've dyed on full skeins. This one's grapefruit, but I'm doing them now as gumball minis. And then these are colorways that I've done in the past. This one is uh, hibiscus, candied hibiscus. This one is sugar rush. This one is sea glass. And this one is pineapple. And pineapple has been updated. It used to be solid, and now it's speckled with light tinges of pink here and there. So that one has been updated in that colorway. So fun, fun. Those are all of the colors that I've got available at my next update, which should be on Thursday, January 28th. Is that right? Yes, yes 28th. Which is probably when this video will be coming out. I'll right? hopefully have this video up this evening, but okay. you may just miss that. But I will be dying it again, dying yarn again. So that's my shop news. Okay. Yay, we did it. <laughs> I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. Yes, time for lunch. So I'm going to go eat and then I'm going to work on this video. And then I'm going to do lots of other things. We're pulling up our carpet <laughs> on our stairs today. That'll be fun. Yay. Yay. Home improvements but is a carpet must to is do, but carpet is so good. It's yeah, going to be yeah. so good. We've been, I've been literally waiting for this for years. It's so It's always worth it to just, mm -hmm. just do it. I know. It <laughs> as is. painful as it is <sighs> to yes. do any home remodeling and home <laughs> projects, like it's, it's painful. It's true. It is <sighs> true. Well, thank you for joining us. It's so good to talk, see you all. We don't get to see you, but we get to talk to you. Yeah, um, well, we hear from you all the time yes. in our comments, and I love that. It's our lovely. last video, we had a lot of great, great feedback. So thank you. <laughs> oh, and thank you for everybody who joined in our um, Christmas playlist yeah, creation. That was really fun. We loved that. That was really fun. I listened to that playlist, uh, found a lot of new songs yeah. that I liked, and that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> found songs that I found I really don't like, but it's okay. <laughs> like, it's all right. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> okay. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.